everybody. Welcome to Talking Heartland. This is a show where we are recapping back episodes of Heartland Show, and we are finishing up season 10 today. It's very exciting. (laughs) We have episodes 16, 17, and 18 today, and I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Michelle's here. Hey, everyone. Yes, can you believe it? We're we've done a decade of Heartland. I just want to say a decade of TV. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and we have uh, well five seasons uh, left. Uh, the yeah. new season is airing at least here in the states. It's airing uh, this next month, I think. So, oh wow, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I would say in general, season 10 has not been that great. I think the whole thing with Ty has just really dragged it down. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's been such a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think the show is very lucky that it has such a, you know, group of, you know, guest stars and recurring characters like over the years that have really saved the season, you know, that they've made, they've been able to bring Caleb and bring, Mallory back you know bring Scott and you know they're so lucky to have those people because it's just been such an inconsistent group of characters this year yeah no it's really true they definitely helped a lot yeah and I I would say this was also kind of a I mean it, the the baby of course is exciting mm-hmm. but I didn't think that this was a the strongest group of kind of season finale episodes no oh. i think just because we've seen ty be sick before it mm-hmm. felt very similar to that episode of when they were sort of secluded and ty had a fever it was sort of i mean it, yeah this was different and more serious but i think just because we've had that kind of cliffhanger type of story with ty before mm-hmm. It just felt very sort of anticlimactic and it felt like it just didn't feel like there was anything sort of surprising or big for me maybe part of the maybe part of the problem is that we know that he made it so because we know he's in future seasons whereas if you're watching in real time you wouldn't necessarily know so maybe it would have more tension but I don't know. Like the whole plot was just a mistake. <laughs> they yeah, should have just yeah. had him just not be in the season. Like just have him just be gone, but like be there, but just be gone, you know? And, and, or at least if you're going to have him in the season, like just record like a few little, little moments enough that he's like there, but like, doesn't have to be a, a lead. Yeah. Yeah. Something they should have other. Him, like, yeah, doing like a a vet course in Calgary and like yeah. sort of has to like video in and that way he doesn't feel so far away as well. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they tried to sort of. I'm not sure how how sort of similar it is to the actor, but I I know that he travelled this season that he wanted yeah. off and he sort of tied, and that's not. I really don't like it when they do that. Like the character is the character and the person is the person. Like you don't. <laughs> they're not one in the same and, and it's sort of frustrating when writers sort of write real life sort of characteristics and life experiences of the actors into the characters yeah 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 I agree well it starts out with uh this episode called a long shot and it's mm-hmm. a secret from Jack's past threatens to change his relationship with the family forever um i don't know i didn't no, love I didn't. this episode yeah. <laughs> i i mean the whole time i'm just thinking i i just i feel like you can't do this with every male character and have mm-hmm. like a secret baby you know plot yeah yeah and we've known jack for you know 10 seasons now it's like this is not something that he would hide or I mean I mean I knew the story before it was revealed like that's how well we know this character like mm-hmm. when you find out that you know Clara's dad had died like I knew it was about the dad dying and, and you know Jack helping out mm-hmm. um, because he felt some sort of guilt before that was revealed because that's what makes sense for the character like an illegitimate child just doesn't 
it doesn't really fit um, Jack as a character and it felt like a bit of a reach story-wise. Yeah, I agree. I just feel like he loved Lindy so much. I yeah. I I don't, I don't know. Like just to throw that in 10 seasons in, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And especially because, you know, we lived, he lived through the whole Tim having a secret child thing. Uh-huh. Like this would have came up back then. Yeah. Yeah. The secret child that we've forgotten about. This oh, yeah, is no doesn't longer. Anymore. <laughs> doesn't even get mentioned. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even remember his name. But uh, uh, so, yeah. So Mitch actually goes to New York with Lou. This seemed strange to me as well. Like yeah. in, in the spot they are in their relationship, I just don't picture him traveling with her. Yeah. I mean, I understand because she's gone so much. Um, but it, yeah, it just felt, yeah, it felt a little off. Yeah. I mean, they're barely officially dating. They just announced it. Yeah. To the, the yeah. family. So to go mm-hmm. to New York together seems yeah. like a lot. I can understand it from the aspect of the only way he's going to get to see her is if he goes to New York because she's <laughs> gone so much. I can sort of justify it in that sense. But yeah, like traveling together and, and you know, it does seem like a, a couple of steps <laughs> from where they're actually at in the relationship. Yeah. And but Tim gets upset uh, because he went to New York with Lou and Jack's like, the only reason I travel is because of Lisa. <laughs> and he barely does that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Begrudgingly. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, he's the only person that has to be dragged to Paris. Right. <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah, Tim was the worst in these three episodes. He yeah. was just peak irritating Tim. Yeah. It's just... It's so frustrating because we do get like a really great run of episodes with him. Um, mm-hmm. And I think even just in, in the sort of last episode, um, he's great with Amy. Like all of that is great, but he's so awful to the men and relationships with his daughters that it's just beyond a joke. Like it really is so repetitive. And I really feel like I understand where it's coming from in the sense that he messed up, he left. And he doesn't want his daughters to experience that. But on the same, you know, he still doesn't have a leg to stand on because he did do all of those things. And, you know, the way he treats Ty is ridiculous. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better son-in-law, a better son-in-law, a more loyal husband and partner for his daughter. Um, and I really feel like he was just so unfair. I mean, Peter wasn't my favourite, but he was so unfair to Peter right from the jump all the way through. Um, yeah, and he's just doing the exact same thing with Mitch. Yeah, I mean, and Mitch does at least call him out on it and say, well, yeah. I think it's somebody yeah. who, who mm-hmm. is nobody is good enough for yeah. uh, for their daughter. Yeah. And, yeah. and he says that Tim, that I mean, he says that Peter was the provider. And I'm thinking he hated Peter. <laughs> like, yeah, he exactly. <laughs> yeah, he hated Peter. Like, <laughs> And yeah, Mitch is here working on the farm, like sees Lou all the time, but he's not ambitious enough for Tim. Like, what what exactly is it that you want? I mean, Ty has basically, you know, struggled his whole life and, and you know, fought, well, it's not uh, like Tim is the king of ambition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what I mean, has he done that's so great in his life? Yeah. I guess he was good in the rodeo, but he was a mess yeah. to his family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it's... Yeah, and his business with, you know, the diner, that's through Lou. Right. You know, that's not something that he, you know, you know, got off the ground. I mean, the only thing he really has is the, is the rodeo school. Mm. Yeah, and he says that you need a backup plan, kind of like when your daughter is dating a ranch hand with no prospects. You're just like, it's her choice. I mean, yeah. She gets to decide. It's, it's yeah. really none of your business. As yeah, as a, uh, a a dad, you just you just need to be there to support. And 
That's yeah, it. and we don't even really know if he knows that, you know, Mitch served in the army and that, you know, he actually does have a lot of ambition, you know, he, you know, he was, you know, moments away from taking an engineer job, like, a couple of episodes ago, like, yeah, he seems to know nothing about Mitch and, yeah. you know, doesn't seem interested in learning anything. No, I, I mean, I, I think he just gets sort of threatened by these new men mm-hmm. in his daughter's life yes. because yeah. he's not very supportive of Ty either. I mean, no. and I mean, granted, this whole Mongolia thing is just stupid, mm-hmm. but so <laughs> I understand him being critical of that, but, but nevertheless, even before then he was very critical of Ty and I don't know, it's just... Mm-hmm. I'm just tired of Tim. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of like the yo yo and back and forth of like not really knowing where we stand. Like it just feels mm-hmm. like we revert so often with him. We get to a really good place and then it's just back to back to the worst. <laughs> the worst yeah. it could be. So he so so Mitch is trying to uh bail up the stack up the hay mm-hmm. uh, and he wants to use the tractor to help with that process with the bales because they're really heavy and uh, and so then tim t- takes out the alternator in the tray in the tractor so that he can't do it because he's like i guess trying to prove that mitch is and make him work harder or something like that yeah this is so stupid <laughs> I mean, he's just giving himself more work. <laughs> and he claimed, they say, oh, well, Jack did the same thing when he was, when Tim was dating Marion. So this is like some kind of test. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And why, yeah. why was Tim working in the hay, in the, working with the tractor? Like, I don't even understand why he, Jack would have done that. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he calls, decides to call Mitch Trooper. Oh. And, uh, and Jack says, well, there was a horse named Trooper. And Jim respected, Jim, Tim, sorry, Tim respected that horse. Sure hated it, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that Tim is best in episodes like when he's the prenatal yeah. counselor when mm-hmm. he's just fun and supportive and not that we can't have you know flawed characters that are a little irritating but when yeah. he, when he's just so selfish all the time it gets a little much yeah yeah i does like in these episodes that again like mitch does stand up to him a little bit yeah and then in sort of future episodes we have a moment with amy as well so it was nice to see it be a little bit different in the sense that characters are standing up to him now yeah i it's true um so the main plot of this episode is this woman named claire wallace comes and she uh she uh, finds has found this payment uh from jack throughout the years to her mother when her mother's passed away and uh she wants to repay him which i i mean it had to have just been a just a gestures there's no way that she expected that he would actually accept the check back yeah there's no way that he would do that but she thinks that jack is his it's the jack is her father uh and so we get some kind of tension with that like we talked about she -hmm. also has amy working with a horse called shamrock and Uh, that's kind of a, a plot that the they're trying to get the horse to kind of go backwards yeah it's sort of losing direction when it goes backwards mm-hmm. and uh, we also have at the beginning of the episode which was probably actually the best part of the episode was uh there is an incident at the ranch where somebody paintballs the horses and so Phoenix gets really uh, spooked mm-hmm. and runs away. And so then Georgie uh, goes to try to help Phoenix. And I thought that 
those were probably the best part of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting that the episode sort of started with, with such a, like, intense scene, and then that had little to do with the rest of the episode. Like, yeah. it wasn't about finding those guys, or, like, <laughs> it was sort of weird to sort of start that way and, and sort of not do nothing with it, but it felt like, it just sort of felt like it went to nowhere. Yeah. The police say, oh, we'll give it appropriate attention. And in fairness, I don't even know how would you go about finding some random, it's not like they have a license plate or a, yeah, there's not anything. Or nothing, yeah. You know, so, uh, but, uh, but that really upsets Tim, especially. And uh, Georgie goes and talks to Adam to see if Adam's dad can, step it up <laughs> the search and then adam uh comes and his father actually finds the teen somehow who knows and adam says uh, he, adam helps georgie try to uh, with phoenix but then he says he doesn't want to get back together and uh, yeah i don't know i i kind of wish that they would just go back to wyatt <laughs> i like my yeah. better with georgie <laughs> yeah yeah whole why it comes back soon mm-hmm. and uh we also have ty collapsing uh and then bob finds a tick on him so i thought oh they're gonna have him have lyme disease or something mm-hmm. yeah me too mm-hmm. yeah and uh and then uh at the very end of the episode uh bob messages amy and tells her about ty being sick yeah so it was we, sort of we, crazy that he was wanting to travel with that like he's so sick like can barely stand yeah i know and they and then they just have him kind of mysteriously at the hospital they kind of skipped that whole part which was weird yeah, but uh just, but, yeah don't understand how he got on a plane yeah <laughs> but and we find out that there was this horse uh that was this crazy bronc uh that uh, jack had drawn but he passed on riding the horse and then so gill decides to ride the horse because he really needs the money uh and he uh he'd been on a roll he'd been on a streak Mm -hmm. and uh, he ends up dying riding the this horse and uh, and then so jack feels like because if he had ridden the bronc uh that it, you know who knows what have happened so i felt he says i felt i had to take care of his family and i wanted to and he says your dad would have done the same thing for my family so you know that was kind of the end but i just didn't love this whole plot yeah yeah it was very paint by numbers and it felt very sort of filler before the finale as well mm-hmm. but yeah just sort of it felt like a bit of a nothing of an episode to be honest <laughs> yeah I'd give it like mm, like a 6.5 I think yeah I think that's fair we'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon do you love Hallmarkies podcast Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. All right. So then the next episode is called Dreamer. And the summary is the family rallies around Amy to support her while Ty is admitted to the hospital after returning from Mongolia. Georgie helps Olivia save her horse from being put down and one of Lou's investors pulls out at the last minute. 
So overall, what do you think of this episode? Um, I prefer. I liked this episode. I thought it was okay. Um, a little bit of a step up from from the previous one. Um, but yeah, I just don't think these are very strong sort of penultimate episode or finale. So yeah, I felt like a little bit. Yeah, just doesn't feel feel very finale to me. Yeah. So Ty is at the hospital again. How did he get? over uh on a plane a long international flight yeah. i don't we don't know uh but uh, he has pneumonia they're worried about sepsis coming in and uh which is if the antibody if he doesn't respond to the antibodies then the infection will go stronger mm-hmm. and uh, Ty is having this whole dream of this house with the light and everything and calling to him. And, and I thought all that was kind of cheesy, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I know it's a cheesy is. show, but yeah. Yeah. Come to, come to the light. Come to the light, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, that this show does. I initially thought it was going to be like a flashback to his childhood, which it kind of was. It was his dad, but it turns yeah. out it was, it was dad calling him like over to the white light. Yeah, it felt a little bit cheesy and, you know, I feel like the illness itself is is enough of a story. Like anybody that's had pneumonia or had, you know, a family member that's had pneumonia, like it's really scary. It really Mm -hmm. can get really bad and it can be very touch and go and and people do sort of lose their lives to it. So I think that is enough without this sort of added sort of cheesy sort of spiritual thing that was going on as well like yeah it really felt kind of because they've never done it before yeah it felt kind of yeah faith-based feature film kind of thing to me yeah it was just not uh it was it was just kind of cheesy with then he sees the bike and and uh and then he says the uh that uh you've abandoned us just like you abandoned Amy, you know, all this stuff. I don't know. It's just, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. And uh, we do get some different visitors coming to see Ty. We have of course, Amy and, uh, and then Tim, and he's just being the worst, uh, being difficult to the hospital staff, to the doctor. And, and then he fights with Bob yeah, he was awful. Like considering, like, I mean, I will say Amber Marshall is, is so great at like sounds weird to like being pregnant. Like she really mm. looks like she is just ready to have that baby. Yeah. And yeah, it just is so ridiculous for Tim to come in and his daughter to be like, you know, days away from giving birth and have that sort of attitude. And the thing is, is that fighting with Bob is not going to help anything. Like the decisions no. have been made. He's yeah. Ty is sick. You can't go back. So there's no point mm-hmm. in doing all of this. Uh, so that was frustrating. And he goes in to visit Ty and he says, I'm mad as hell at you for going away. And he says, he comes, it's my way of protecting Amy. But then Amy says earlier, she says, you bully everyone around. I need you to leave. Yeah. And obviously, was, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's just so good. Like somebody finally said that to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> it did feel good. And <laughs> uh, that he, he is, you know, saying he wants to protect her when it doesn't help her at all it just makes her life more complicated Mm -hmm. she has to deal with his him in his fits Mm -hmm. and the whole idea of sort of protecting women is always a little bit uh makes me a little uncomfortable because yeah you, you can you can excuse a lot of terrible behavior uh on the guise of protection mm-hmm that in fact, the, with this whole Will Smith uh, slap thing, the thing that oh, disturbed yeah. me probably the most was when he said, "Oh, I got to protecting my woman." I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like she was fine. Like she was kind of rolling her eyes and like, right. here we go again, kind of thing from Chris Rock. Like, yeah, 
I hardly doubt she leaned over and said, go like physically assault. <laughs> yeah, bizarre. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, we have this situation with Budget Buster, which is Olivia's horse. And there's a a woman who works in the stalls named Cheryl who Mm. became friends with budget buster. And then Olivia got jealous of that. And so she complained and had her demoted to not working with the horses anymore. And uh, so budget buster is upset and he basically like kicks her or something like that. Yeah. He sort of bucks her off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she has a broken arm and Olivia is just the worst. She's worse than so, him. Oh, I feel so bad for this horse. <laughs> this is like the second time it's almost been put down to her like behavior and not like wanting to like. I mean, I know we we sort of joke that we hardly see Georgie with Phoenix, but you know those horses are sort of cared for by their owners, whereas. You know, it just feels like she just competes on that horse and everything else is taken care of by someone else. Yeah, I mean, there's that. And then she gets mad at the people who do care for it. Yeah, exactly. And then she gets mad at the horse for, like, not bonding to her when she doesn't spend any time with the horse. Yeah, she's just, she's awful. And she's awful to everyone around her. And uh, I feel so bad for that horse. They should have, like, an owner that actually cares about them. Yeah. Beyond competitions. Yeah, at least he has he he has um Cheryl there taking care. Of her. Yeah, but that's not good enough for Olivia. I don't know. And we're supposed to kind of buy that they are becoming more friendly. I think Georgie and Olivia, but I'm not buying it. She's just no. so difficult. Yeah, I I just don't think they should write them as friends. Like, especially if they continue to not develop Olivia. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like they, they sort of have her do something awful and you know have her apologize and then you know a few episodes later it's you know rinse and repeat yeah I it's it's not really working well and then we have uh, Peter getting uh, his investor friend to become a uh, become involved in Lou's business Mm -hmm. and I feel like if they're really thinking about doing a franchise and especially if it's going to be in New York City like they they were talking like this is going to be in Times Square which is (laughs) yes um they need a lot more than Peter from Vancouver to be investing in this thing yeah like you need for that kind of a thing you would need I don't know like major investors like a Rupert Murdoch kind of I mean I, that's just the first person I could think of but you would need like a, a serious investor for yeah. a chain that's having a place in Times Square yeah yeah I'd imagine you'd need someone who's like the CEO of like a multi-million dollar company yeah as opposed to someone who works in oil <laughs> right you would need like the person who runs uh the runs things yeah. like the olive garden chain there's like a i forget the there's a subsidiary that runs all of those and there's like four mm-hmm. or five other brands it's like the red lobster people are you need somebody like that mm-hmm. not peter from vancouver yeah who's you know had this job for like two years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and but he evidently has this friend and Lisa tells him, tells Lou that favors that involve money cause complications. Always don't get involved with your ex. Yep. And I think yep. that's probably pretty sound counsel. Yeah, for sure. Like it's definitely, <laughs> definitely words of wisdom. And especially considering it's something that she's gone through. Um, we saw it when we first got introduced to Lisa of all the problems that her husband caused or ex-husband caused mm-hmm. just because they were in business together so yeah I feel like she should really listen to Lisa <laughs> yeah and I don't feel like Peter would be a silent partner I oh, just don't God, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. he hadn't even done it yet and he was like making plans and right <laughs> uh, well they go to meet 
with this investor person, this friend, and they're all looking all slick and everything. And, and Mitch sees it and he's first upset that Lou forgot about him and they were going to do something. And, and then he sees him and he he's threatened by it because they look like such a power couple. Uh, but yeah. I can understand that, I guess that. Yeah. I can understand the, secu- the insecurities and, and, you know, as something like, you know, they are in a relationship now and he is in a relationship with someone who, you know, their ex is always going to be in their, their life, um, at least for the next, you know, 18 years. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's something that he is going to have to get past if he is going to, you know, go forward with this relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I also think that Lou needs to be careful and and not just forget about him like this. Yeah. Going yeah, forward. Yeah, she needs to keep yeah, she needs to keep both people in the pic- in the picture uh, mm-hmm. of what's going on. Um because it feels like she sort of brushes off Mitch quite a bit as well. Um so yeah, it's it's just a mess. Well, and I, I mean feel especially like she should know- she should know Peter well enough to know like how this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also she should understand because the whole thing that made her upset and wanted a divorce in the first place was the fact that Peter was too obsessed with his job. Mm-hmm. So it should be, it should be obvious. Uh, so then we have more of I and the dream and uh, he, uh, he says, uh, I never got to say that I forgive you. And then I have to go now. So he decides to stay. <laughs> uh, so and I'm, yeah, I, I kind of, there probably were really emotional watching this when it first aired. Cause again, they didn't know that he would necessarily be back. And so there, it was probably more emotional then than it is for us now, but yeah, we're just being so heartless of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just very melodramatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like you said, it just feels like a very sort of faith based, the closest I've ever came to like having mm-hmm. religion in the show. Yeah. It's like it would make sense if you know he was a character that we knew went to church and right, you know, that was a part of his life, but that it just feels so out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is, I I agree. And he starts to improve, feel better. And he tells Amy, I can't wait to be a father. And uh, then Adam comes and visits Georgie in the hospital. So they kind of reunite, I guess. So uh, what would you give this episode one to 10? Um, I'd probably give it like a 7.5. Yeah, I think that's a fair. It's definitely stronger than the last one, but mm-hmm. okay. Then we have with Caleb and Cassandra's wedding, as well as the birth of Amy and Ty's baby on the horizon, everyone is rushing to make sure both events go down without a hitch. It's greater expectations. And overall, I, this episode was fine, but I was kind of irritated because I feel like I'm reasonably invested in Caleb and Cassandra's relationship at this point. Mm-hmm. And to a knock on to see their wedding at all was kind of lame, yeah. I thought. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was so annoying. Um, <laughs> I really feel like they have such a, you know, they're so lucky to have Caleb as a character and, mm-hmm. and Carrie as part of the cast. I, I just don't understand why he's not in the main cast. Okay. Like, it feels like he could definitely still be a character that's there in all of the episodes, um, especially as Ty's best friend, you know, as someone who, you know, could work on the ranch and, and you know, as friends with Amy. Like, it just feels like, you know, they just could use him way more than they do. And, you know, he has someone that we've seen over the years, you know, close to, like, you know, something like seven, eight years now. And it just feels ridiculous that, he finally gets to this point and maybe they feel like we already saw a wedding with Caleb with Ashley but yeah it just feels kind of crazy especially this season it felt like Ty's back now so we don't need to invest in these characters that have kind of 
saved the season up to this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like just because Amy goes into labor, like most going into labor, most labors take a long time. Like especially your first baby, most mm-hmm. women, it's it it can take multiple days sometimes. Yeah, uh, that's not uncommon at all. And it definitely almost always had, you're going to, you're talking about hours and hours and hours. And so I get taking Amy to the hospital. I understand that or to her her home where she had a home birth, which Lou with that was driving me crazy. But Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They all ditched Caleb. Like you can't stay for like 45 minutes an hour it, like your wedding ceremony is not that long <laughs> like huh. they all build like i'd understand amy but mm-hmm. the rest of everybody could definitely have stayed and watched the wedding yeah yeah for sure because it seemed like, like they all- were in the wedding they all had their the you know the boutonnieres and the it seemed like they were part of the wedding party mm-hmm. uh, not just guess. And so it, I mean, it, yeah, it literally, maybe not even 45 minutes. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't take long. They, the actual no. ceremony is unless there's, you know, unless you combine it with sometimes people will have like a communion with their wedding or, you know, something like that, mm-hmm. that maybe would make it take longer, but yeah. they could have definitely everybody, but Amy could have stayed. And I think even Amy could have stayed. <laughs> yeah yeah it was kind of crazy just to see them sort of on mass just leaving them like for Caleb he's yeah, the, was... whole, the only reason Ty's out with Amy to have the babies because Caleb went and got him <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that but but yeah. they could have at the very very least have had a little clip when he's like hey we got married and like a little yeah. montage of them getting married. Cause again, I feel yeah. like I'm invested enough in this couple that I wanted yeah. to actually see them get married. Yeah, me too. It feels like we could have had like a montage of like Amy rushing home and then sort of flashing back to like, well, sort of cutting to the, the wedding ceremony. Yeah. It's our ice cream truck. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <It's there. laughs> He's back. Yes. <laughs> It's so funny. My dog it, hears the ice cream, the ice cream truck, and just like immediately goes to the window because he wants ice cream. He's so cute. I mean, it, one of these days you'll have to actually go and get some, get some ice cream. <laughs> that's funny. Um, uh, if people don't know, that's a recurring theme on our uh, talking <laughs> Heartland episodes, but it's been a little while since <laughs> we've had it. Uh, but um, but anyway, yeah, this whole thing with them rescuing Ty from the hospital was insane. I, yeah. If he is, if he is well, just because they're waiting on test results, there's not a hospital in the world that would like keep somebody. It's like, it's all of a sudden this prison, like that made yeah. no sense. Like if he wants yeah. to leave, he's a human, he can leave. Like there's no, yeah, yeah. there's no way like a hospital, I'm leaving. Yeah. There's no way a hospital is going to like keep a bed that someone needs just because someone's waiting on tests like they would get him out of that room in the first place there's no way <laughs> would be yeah. like, no sorry we can't give this you know patient that's you know grievously ill because a patient's wait another patient is waiting on test results who's perfectly healthy and packed up and ready to go um yeah that was crazy it, it made no sense and and Caleb had to like sneak him out it was like watching just like heaven <laughs> Yeah, and especially it seemed like it was, it was some sort of like accident or clerical error or sort of, you know, it was something that was no fault yeah. to tie. Like, <laughs> I mean, but in just like heaven, she's in a coma. Mm-hmm. And so she's, she can't say, I want to leave. And mm-hmm. so they have to take her out against, uh, that made sense. In this case, he's a perfectly fine person. He can just walk out of the hospital and leave. Like they can't force you to stay there it made no sense yeah if anything like i don't know what it's like another one like you could just literally sign himself out yeah exactly <laughs> just, just leave, out. You're, you're just leave. 
like unless you're a prisoner or something like there's yeah. some reason yeah it was so crazy like when it first started I was like oh my god is like Graham Wardle not in Canada is he like not available for this episode is there some sort of reason that they're keeping him and like the rest of the cast apart like I was so, so like weird. oh my god what's happening because it was such weird such a weird choice yeah it it's was insane it, it was so ridiculous but we also have uh that georgie keeps seeing ghost and she decides she's going to try to gentle ghost mm-hmm. and so we get some kind of scenes with that with her working with the horse i feel so bad for this horse of like he's turned <laughs> into such a harbinger of doom of like yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's for a while there, you even wondered, is is ghost really real? Because Amy yeah. would kind of yeah. fantasize about him. Yeah, he's a magic horse for a while. <laughs> now he's like a real, now yeah. he's a real horse again. But yeah, like Amy used to be so like enamored with him, and now like he shows up, and Amy's just like, oh my god, what's happening? What's wrong with Ty? <laughs> They're so tied together on such a mystical level that whenever ghost shows up, something's wrong with Ty. Yeah, it's bad luck, this horse. It really is. But Lou, again, gets kind of upset with Amy about uh, her birth plan. And he says, her plan is driving driving me crazy. And uh, this is just ridiculous. Many people have home births. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's perfectly reasonable to Mm -hmm. have a midwife. Uh, also reasonable for it to take a, a little bit for the midwife to arrive. There's nothing the mm-hmm. midwife can really do at the beginning anyway. It's just kind of, mm-hmm. you're just kind of walking and trying to get, to get things going. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm no expert. I've never had a child, but I, I just know that most, in most cases, especially a first delivery takes a long time. And Lou yeah. should know this, having had a child herself. Yeah, that that's what's so crazy. Like, I understand on the level of, like, it's her baby sister. Um, I understand that. But she was being so awful and rude to Amy. Like, Amy's plan is Amy's plan, and that's that's just the way it is. It's whatever, you know, it's whatever makes Amy the most comfortable. Um, and having a home birth is what was her choice. And, you know, Lou should know from her own experience of you know having a child that she should respect that um but she doesn't and then she's so rude to the the midwife who you know is just walking in like she's so awful like and causing stress in a stressful an already stressful situation of someone that's having a child for the first time like yeah and doesn't she say oh you're gonna have the baby in the barn and it's like it's her apartment apartment. yeah (laughs) <laughs> so yeah stupid. yeah she's not having a baby and amongst the hay like <laughs> i mean i just figure when it's when it's about uh someone's baby their yeah. choice it's it's their, their choice. baby it's, it's yeah. their body mm-hmm. lay off yeah yeah I mean, could you imagine if someone was telling lou how to yeah know? that's what i was just thinking <laughs> She would have been furious, so furious. Yeah. And it's a totally valid way to have your child is mm-hmm. if you want to have a home birth, if you want to be in a birthing center, if you want to be in a hospital, you know, what, whatever, <laughs> uh, the, whatever the, the, the mother wants, uh, mm-hmm. is, is somebody that for all intents and purposes, this is just not a high risk pregnancy, it's she's perfectly healthy the baby seems perfectly healthy if it was like turn if the baby was breached or turned around or something like that then i can understand like go to the hospital but Mm -hmm. you have plenty of time uh i think they said that the hospital was like two hours away or something like that again Mm -hmm. like your first baby usually takes a long time and so you have plenty of time to figure out oh we need to go to the hospital uh and so it was just annoying and the the i feel like this whole pregnancy lou has been really pretty irritating <laughs> yeah considering she's been gone most of the time like yeah. 
Yeah, it takes several seats. Like, yeah, making Amy read all these books and all this stuff that uh, insisting yeah. that she fi- find out the sex of the baby, you know, things like that. That's like that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with finding or not finding. Like, there's nothing. And sure, read all the books if that helps you. But could it actually? Mm-hmm. It could actually make things worse for Amy. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it feels like she sort of popped in, you know, told Amy what to do, like judged every decision that she made and then popped back out again, yeah. like all season long. Yeah. So we also find out that Peter is going to have to, that the investor has walked away, that Peter is, is made the offer to come in with the full amount again it would be millions like yeah it would be millions of dollars absolutely and you know, that he believes in lou and all of a sudden he's warren buffett and can like support <laughs> those are like the only rich people i can think of mark cuban yeah. all of a sudden he's mark cuban and he can help. yeah yeah, he's living in like a two-bedroom apartment like but oh, he's like a millionaire as well right <laughs> uh uh-huh. so then we have uh the uh, the whole thing with mitch seeing peter and lou together and they he sees them hugging at one point um, he's kind of jealous of them at the going to the wedding. And of course, Peter's going to go to the wedding. He like knows Caleb mm-hmm. and Cassandra. He, yeah. I mean, he's not going as her date. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Liz, you know, if Mitch's whole sort of arc in this episode made no sense. It's like, they just made them, they just went from like, I don't know, they've just sort of made them very insecure these last two episodes. Like, I understand part of the insecurities, but it just feels like any time Peter shows up, he just sort of loses confidence in himself and Lou and the relationship more and more and more. And he says, oh, there's something between you two. And, and Lou says, of it's course like, there's everybody. something between us. It's called two kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is accurate. Yeah. So that was frustrating. Um, We also have Caleb telling Tim that they told Cass, that Cass and him told her parents that he was working full-time job for Tim, this rodeo school. Mm -hmm. And at the end, uh, well, first Tim tells him, well, you got to come clean. You don't want to start your relationship out on a lie. I mean, technically Mm -hmm. they started their relationship cheating. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They started on a lie to begin with. Yeah. 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 If you want to split hairs. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) Tim ends up deciding to hire Caleb. And uh, my favorite moment of the whole episode though was she has the baby and they show Spartan name. Oh yeah. When yeah. He hears the- <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah. It was so cute. And then it had ghosts outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Georgie lets him go. Yeah. And uh, of course the tests come back clean. And then Lou tells Peter that she doesn't want to work with him. She says it wouldn't be good for us to, or for me to work together. Mm-hmm. But then she comes, she goes to tell Mitch and his trailer's gone. He's gone. Oh, this is the worst. That's so <laughs> mad. <laughs> this, yeah. So annoying of like, it's such a, a, again, I understand his insecurities, but for him to just like, ditch her like just pick up his things and leave and then in, earlier in the episode he's talking to Georgie and he says something about how men don't communicate well <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah no kidding it kind of reminded me of in Just One Kiss which we recapped together this last yeah. week uh, when 
with all of this mess going on with her ex Mm -hmm. and Santina Fatana's character, I think his name is Ben says, Danny is complicated. You just get thrown into the middle of someone's life. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's their correct answer. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You can't expect someone to not have a life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, especially when she's literally just barely uh, been divorced from Peter. I mean, they just signed the papers a couple of episodes ago. Yeah, they just signed the papers. And Mitch was sort of pushing to be the one introduced as a boyfriend. He wanted to go to the wedding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, it wasn't the best finale, but I do love the... It was sweet when she, you know, has the baby and then and then, uh, like I said, that moment with Spartan was peacock so heartland. That yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'd probably give this one, mm, I guess, an eight. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely put it as a, an eight, like on the lower tier of, of heartland finales. They tend to sort of yeah. have their big sort of action in the penultimate episodes anyway. But yeah, this just felt a little lackluster. So let us know if you're listening, what you think of these three episodes. Did you like them more than we did? Maybe you did. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section and, or on Twitter. And Michelle, where can people find you? Um, on Twitter at Michelle R. Benson. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And also make sure you're following the podcast at Homework Keys Pod and Homework Keys Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. We really appreciate it. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store and the merch store has Heartland Inspired merch. So check that out. We would really appreciate it. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We will be on to season 11. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.